Greetings, my name is Rudimentary Rob. Welcome back to my Valheim series. Today we are doing some exploring. Now, if you recall in our previous episode, we sort of scouted a river slash creek type thing as a means from getting where we are to somewhere closer to where the Yagolith spawn is. Now, we're back in our big boat. We've got quite a lot of black metal on board, but we're, it's easier to just take it with us. Uh, I guess I could throw it in a chest somewhere, but I'm feeling pretty optimistic about this trip. So uh, make yourself uh, comfortable. Uh, we're going to be uh, spending a lot of time in the boat this episode, but don't worry, there are some other little things along the way. So, uh, get your waterproof gear on, and, uh, let me, uh, let me do the piloting. Now, you may remember my bit of, uh, you know, fairly, uh, agile navigation of a river in the little boat you know, quite a number of episodes ago. Uh, we're going to place uh, our uh, faith in my abilities once again, except this time the boat is a lot bigger and the river is actually a little bit smaller. So, yeah, you might want to hang on to some kind of flotation device here. This might get a little bit rough. couple of locals there just uh, wanting to uh, critique my uh, epic sailing skills. Uh, don't worry, uh, this thing is still faster than whatever the uh, lacklustre swimming speed of a gobbo might be. We made it through that river. Let's hope we don't have to do that again in a hurry. Uh, we did get a bit lucky there not encountering a bunch of mosquitoes or anything like that. So, you know, taking that as a uh, positive uh, boon for our uh, future voyages, we're uh, going to push on. We're now uh, navigating our way back to the drop chest that we dropped in the previous episode because there's... Uh, a little bit of black metal there, and uh, we wouldn't mind getting the timber back from the bench as well. So uh, that is our next destination. The uh, weather today in Valheim is absolutely beautiful. I really wish I could get this more often in Valheim, but, you know, Valheim are in Jesus giveth and are in Jesus take away. 
Uh, at the moment, we're getting a bit of the generous giving. Uh, but rest assured, a bit later in the episode, we're not going to be as... Uh, we're not going to be feeling quite so positive. Uh, particularly when you get close to your destination and you get this really thick fog bank so you can't see six inches in front of your face. Uh, don't worry, this isn't the only time that that's going to happen. Alright, here we go, reversing away from the shore. Uh, we've picked up our little stash. And we're now going to be working on setting sail out towards the marker for Eagleth. Now, I've had some questions in the past, and apologies if I haven't necessarily sort of jumped on it in a video straight away. I've uh, kind of ended up being quite a long way ahead in terms of my video making as opposed to what you how long you end up waiting to see it on youtube so at the moment uh today's date is about the 19th of june uh this is going to be scheduled for towards the end of the first week of july so that's kind of the time frames i'm at at the moment it's not always going to be that way uh i've just got a couple of things coming up over the next uh week or week and a half and not really going to get a lot of gameplay time, let alone time to actually edit into videos. So I'm sort of uh, hitting my maximum productivity at the moment on the basis that there's going to be a bit of, you know, not getting much done. But don't worry, it's not going to cause any sort of an adjustment in my release schedule. I'm well ahead of it at the moment. Uh, but getting back to the question, it was a question about sailing. Now, sailing comes down to the direction the boat is pointing you know and you can see there's a little graphic you know halfway up on the right hand side of the screen it shows you obviously a little the the middle part of it represents the boat and the direction the boat is uh, pointing now don't mind it spinning around it also uh, spins with the camera so you can see you know, as I look in one direction, the little graphic turns to reflect that I'm also looking in that direction. So the, the orientation of the boat changes. Now, when you're sailing, what you want, or what the best outcome is going to be, is a situation like we have at the moment, where you've got the little wind icon, is uh, like it's white, and it's in that yellow sort of grayish kind of area around the sides or the back of the boat. Now that indicates you've got a wind coming from the side or behind. And in sailing, that means you can adjust your sails and you can use the wind to move forward. Now the situations where you're not going to be able to do that is if the wind icon is coming mostly if not completely from the front of the ship. So it'll be in that black area of the circle and it itself, the icon itself, will turn dark gray. When it's like that, it means you're going very much into the wind and your sails aren't gonna do anything. In which case, you normally knock your little accelerator marker, which you can see on the little wheel in the middle of the uh, screen there. You've got the little wheel and you've got three chevrons in front of it. So three chevrons means full sail. Two chevrons means half sail. One chevron pointing up means you're just on the tiller only, which means if you, you get up from your post, the boat will ultimately slow to a stop. And if there's one chevron pointing down, that means you're in reverse and your controls are going to be a little bit reversed. 
Uh, so that's pretty much how sailing works. Now, there is a lot of variance between the boats. Generally speaking, the, the later the boat is, as in the later the game boat, so, you know, Longship or the uh, Drakkar, I think it's called, the one that goes to Ashlands, you will find that with the, si uh, with the wind icon very, very close to or overlapping the edge of the black area, you can still use full sail and get a respectable speed. With the little boat and the raft, that is much less the case. The little boat, sometimes if you're right on the edge, you can use half sail and you'll still move okay. But uh, if your uh, icon, your wind icon goes completely grey, you just do like I've got now with the sail completely up. Now I've got the sail completely up just because I'm navigating close to shore and I'm trying not to run aground while I navigate into this little cove next to this tower. Now I'm approaching the shore very quickly here for a good reason because there's a whole bunch of gobbos there and I don't want to give them a chance to do too much damage to the boat. Uh, we've land We've landed in a unfriendly land. We have no portal down. So our boat is basically it at the moment. So we are also not rested. So we are going to be deploying our little friend here, the Door Knocker Mark II, who is still just as relevant now as in many other areas, to thin out the herd a little bit because I noticed there was no one or two star uh, gobbos in that crowd so I knew individually they weren't going to be killing me anytime soon so to get a lot of quick damage down at the expense of maybe a bit of my own health maybe a touch risky but I was pretty confident that I was going to be able to deal with them oh there's Odin in the distance saying hello and we're just going to pick up some more of that lovely black metal so we can stash it away in the boat. And then we're going to look at trying to clear this tower. And uh, if we're successful, we're just going to be setting up our temporary uh, portal in this tower. Let's see how that gets on. I was almost disappointed that there wasn't more nosy neighbours around, but eh, it's all good. Uh, we're just tidying up the mess from earlier. As you can see over there, that strange looking rock formation, that is the altar that you summon Yagloth on. Uh, we're going to go and visit that one in the morning, but for now we just need to consolidate our position. Uh, get a portal down and head back to base so we can get some rested buff and... Do a little bit of a resupply as well. The layout for this tower was slightly more annoying than the previous one. It had this extra layer on top and uh, unfortunately because it's not 
player style uh, structures. They're they're uh, NPC ones, so you can't just destroy them with your build hammer. Uh, I would have had to have got my sledge out or whatever and just you know smashed them manually, and I didn't feel like creating that much of a mess, so. I elected to put the bench up there, and then I was left with the task of what the hell do I do with the portal? And I didn't want to block any of the ladders, so I got this great idea of just putting the portal on the very edge of that ledge, and it actually works really well that way. So don't be afraid to do that, because you never actually fall through the portal. You, like, literally as you hit the portal, it trans transmits you to the next one. And when you come back, it spits you out pretty much where I'm standing. So you're never going to fall down in a hole if you do it that way. All right, here we go. We are at a new day. We are rested, we are supplied, and we're just gonna do a little recon run over to the Yag portal. I'm not intending to summon. I'm just trying to identify if there's, if I need to be aware of anything extra. And the first thing that strikes me is, that's a lot of water. Uh, the Yag fight, Look, I'll explain it in greater detail when it happens, but the Yag fight often <clears throat> covers a lot of ground, and usually around two, three, four sides of the altar. Uh, as I, I get to this position, I think, yep, this is the sort of land I normally have around a Yag altar, but around at least two of the sides it is water and it's not shallow water either it drops off fairly quickly so i even to date i actually i haven't played since this session so i'm working on uh, thinking about what is going to be the least amount of effort now there's a good chance I could do YAG without doing anything. And that's fine, and I may elect to do that. But I'm also thinking, am I going to raise the terrain around the outside of those pillars? If I am, how much stone am I going to need? Uh, it's going to be a lot of mining to dig up that much stone. I don't want to pull the pillars down. The pillars are made of stone and I could knock them down uh, just by mining them. But the pillars are actually really handy for blocking one of Yag's attacks. And I don't really want to get rid of them. So I'm sort of in two minds at the moment and uh, hopefully over the next week or so I'll, I'll decide on what my final course of action is going to be. So... Uh, at this moment, uh, you guys know pretty much as much as I do in terms of how I'm going to go about doing the Yag fight, but it will most likely be the next episode that you see, so with any luck, you'll only need to wait a couple of days after this episode to see the Yag fight. Uh, from my perspective, it could be anywhere up to two weeks before I actually record it, so... Uh, the, a bit more suspense for me than for you. But anyway, these are the sacrifices that I make so that you don't necessarily have to. And you're most welcome. And here we are. We're now going to be sailing back towards home. Uh, we're not just going to backtrack the same route. We do want to get a bit of exploring done. And uh, I've come to realize there's a little bit of mistlands here. And uh, this is a bit of mistlands, you know, on the coast that actually doesn't have mist over it. So that's pretty handy. And you might be thinking, well, I haven't killed Yag yet. Why am I looking or even entering mistlands? Well, simply for one thing. I actually want a little bit of wood from a tree in the Mistlands so that I can unlock the recipe for the black metal pickaxe. 
because uh, you don't get that in the planes. Uh, it's one of the first recipes you get access to in Mistlands. Now, my plan was good because up until this point, I didn't see any critters. Until I saw this guy. And honestly, there was two critters that were going to give me pause with my plan. And this one is definitely one of those two. This is what you call a Seeker Soldier. And they hit really, really hard. Now, it is worth noting that I've already got basically all of my planes equipment. Which means I'm actually wearing what I'm going to be wearing when I go to Miss Lands anyway. So, it's not like I'm undergeared at this point. But the soldier is something worthy of respect. Think of it like coming across a troll that you have to melee in deer leather. And you'll get a little bit more of an idea of why I have my reservations. Now, that's not a completely accurate parallel, but it sort of sets the tone in terms of why I'm being so careful. Again... Uh, we do have a portal sort of nearby, but it would involve building another boat. So I'm not completely, you know, hopeless here if I do end up dying. And we do have our tree here, and so far we're going okay. We seem to be far enough away from the soldier until we swing our axe. And we notice very quickly that our stealth icon goes from, yeah dude, you're cool, to... Oh yeah, I know exactly where you are. And I pan the camera around just to see if I can see if it is the soldier that spotted me. And it definitely is. You can just see it in the very corner of the screen there. So I'm now summoning the courage to work out what to do next. I've only got two minutes worth of rested buff left, but I'm also wet. And I know how painful these things are so I'm trying to get my best possible position before taking this thing on and again I'm I'm pretty much using everything the way I would use it uh, had this just been my first day in this lens so I've elected to go onto a bit of high ground here so I can try and get some shots at his vulnerable rear and as you saw from the yellow, I actually landed one. Uh, but uh, at the same time, he managed to raise himself up a little bit and knock me off my little roost. So here I am in the water, wet, with no stamina. It's about to go night time. And I've got this nightmare fuel bug wanting to kick my ass. How I'm not dead already, I'm not entirely sure, but the fact that I blew my bone mass buff is definitely, you know, something that needed to happen. So now we're, uh, we're, we're going back, we're going to have another go at having a bash at him. Uh, this time we seem to have him a little bit stuck or a little bit wedged, and I think he's conceded that he can't now get to me because I'm a little bit higher up than I was. Uh, that other movement, I'll get to that in a minute, and it, that is also causing me a little bit of concern. Uh, but from this angle, we are able to get some more shots into the Seeker Soldier's vulnerable bits. And as you can see, we managed to dominate him eventually. Now, these other little things that are moving around are ticks. Ticks die very easily. They are the definition of a glass cannon. It doesn't actually take much damage to kill a tick at all. But uh, if they get on you, and that is the correct, correct descriptor, they will start sucking your health down very quickly. And uh, luckily, I do actually have my sledgehammer on me, because that is one of the easiest ways to get rid of them, if you get a tick on yourself. Don't worry, I'll recap all of these tactics later. 
And this little uh, expedition to the Mistlands, I wasn't expecting to come up against this much resistance given what the place looked like initially, but hey, you guys got to learn some bonus facts about the Mistlands before we actually officially go to the Mistlands. So you can see there we got some Yagrazil wood and uh, that has now unlocked the uh, black metal pickaxe and yeah not that much else really because a lot of the other stuff relies on materials that do actually come from mistlands and I'm not that concerned about those things at this stage. We will discover those in good time. For the moment I can't think how much Yagrazil wood I need. So we're going to go and chop up the other half of this tree just to try and make sure that we have enough. Because I don't really want to come back here before we are actually completely done with the planes. Now something else somewhere can obviously see me. I couldn't hear very much so I suspect there may have been another tick but the ticks do get stuck very easily and I'm thinking that that's probably all it is. So for now I'm just resting up to get full stamina, I'm making sure nothing else can see me and I'm now heading back to the boat to take Billy Big Steps out of the Mistlands as quickly as the wind can carry me. When you get out from the uh, center of the world, like the center is roughly where you start, uh, you don't just come across the higher level biomes, you do come across instances of black forest and meadows and pretty much everything else as well. So if you're, you're looking for a safer place to, to put down a, a base, uh, you usually don't need to look very far to find, you know, a plains or a meadows that you can take advantage of out in these kind of areas. Uh, you know, just if you're interested. Uh, the rest of the time, you know, I tend to just keep all of my smelting at my main base. And uh, I just use portals in and out of the main base to do everything else. But... If you're someone who likes to, you know, be a bit more migratory and, and set down bases all over the place, then you're not going to have too much trouble finding something. Now, just showing a bit more progress there. We're, we're working back up towards where that dead serpent marker is, uh, except we've come to realise on the horizon we can see there's a big mountain. So the place where I thought there might have been a gap between the islands is occupied by a mountain. So that does, you know, cause us a little bit of consternation. So we turn south in the hopes that there might be a gap between the two uh, mountains, but uh, that didn't work out. So we go around uh, the other mountain. We're looking in this area. It's all low lying. It's all swamp and we think there's got to be a creek through here somewhere. Uh, yeah, no, there actually doesn't need to be a creek through there as much as that would have been unbelievably useful if there was. So, nothing else to do but push on. Yeah, I noticed this funny little black forest dungeon just sitting on an island all by itself uh, with one little tree on it. It's almost like a little hobbit hole. You do see funny little things like that from time to time. 
but yeah, not really interested in uh, actually running that one, so I'll just make a bit of a mental note that if I get curious, I know where to come back to. Now, as you can see, we've uh, gone past that bit of swamp. Once again, no access through. And we've almost completely looped all the way back to where we started this adventure. Uh, so I strapped my man pants back on again and we're going to run this creek to uh, get back to the right side of this continent. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was a bit tired by the time I got to this point, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to take a full five stars for that trip through, not by a long shot. But still, any boat journey you survive and can walk away from is still perfectly fine. Okay, a little bit of a different progress update for you. I thought I'd show everyone my current skills. Uh, this is where I'm at currently having completed, well, virtually completed the planes. And I've got to say, with the skills I've got at the moment, I am actually finding it a little bit easier with this run than some of the previous runs where I had died a hell of a lot more in previous biomes. So, at this stage, my recommendations are, if you're dying a lot, you might want to modify your map settings to reduce your death penalty. If you're, uh, if you're not dying a lot, then you're going to benefit from having a lot more skills by the time you get further into the game. And I can tell you that makes a hell of a difference. So I just thought I'd share that with you as we wrap up the episode. If you've liked the episode, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed and you hit the notification bell. In the meantime, my name is Rudimentary Rob. Thank you very much for watching and have yourself a fantastic day.